All right, now the third type of anery gene, or aneurysmic gene in boas, is what's known as the black-eyed anery, or as... What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. I'm joined by my little helper today, yeah. Shayla. Are you home from school? Uh -huh. Did you do your homework? Why are you acting kooky? Stop acting like a cuckoo bird. <laughs> did you just see the snakes? You did. Yeah. Which one was your favorite? <laughs> the blue tongues. <laughs> the blue tongues? Yeah. No, you yeah. actually saw you actually saw the, mo the water monitors that had blue tongues too, right? That's the one you liked. And she wasn't afraid. I should have videoed you. Yeah. Pet yeah. Do you have eyeshadow on? You do. I've been down by myself. How do four-year-olds wear eyeshadow? <laughs> <laughs> well, today, guys, we're going to be talking about the difference between the azanthic gene <gasps> and the aneurysmic gene. Look at my earrings. You see those earrings? Those are pretty cool earrings. All right, Shayla, <laughs> she's riding the bike around right now. Today, we're going to discuss the difference between the aneurysmic gene, which is the removal of reds, a gene that takes out reds and snakes versus the azanthic gene, which takes out yellows. There she goes, riding her bike. <laughs> uh, gotta love the kids. Now, the aneurysmic gene is something we find predominantly in the boas. We don't see it in, in ball pythons. We don't really see it in, in carpet pythons. Doesn't mean it can't pop up, but it's a, it's a very popular gene in, in boas. And what the aneurysmic gene does, it removes red. It does not remove yellow, it removes red. The term aneurysmic, A meaning without, uh, and <laughs> theristic meaning red. <laughs> you want to interrupt this video, don't you? I know you do. Go do another lap. <laughs> now in, in, get out of here. <laughs> now in, in Boas, there's uh, three types of, there's actually probably more than that, but there's three main types of anery genes. There's the, an anery we'd say for short, for aneurysmic, it's just easier to say. So for those of you who might not have known what the anery gene is, it stands for aneurysmic, removal of red. But the anery one gene is the, one, the original gene they found in Columbia boas, and it removes reds. That's the uh, gene that was originally used to make the first, you know, snows, and then the first moon glows. The type two anery gene, which was discovered in Central American boas. And, and it's funny because a lot of Central American boas have it in there and no one even knows about it until you breed them together and then you produce an anery out of nowhere. Uh, that's what happened to me. I'll show you that when we uh, take a look at the uh, boas I'm gonna show you. And the anery two gene is, is interesting because it's not compatible with anery one. So if you breed an anery two boa to an anery one boa, you, you get double hats. You don't get a, a visual anery. And that's something to consider if you're trying to produce like a snow and you're using an anery one and an anery two and two different parents, you're not gonna get visuals out of it. So that's important to know. And then there's a third type, we'll talk about the black-eyed anery gene. I believe there's two versions of it out there, the most popular one being the RDR, Ralph Davis Reptile black-eyed anery. And so there's three different versions, they do different things, we'll talk about that in a minute. Oh, there's Logan. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna you're gonna practice your basketball? I'll never finish this intro. <laughs> and then we have this other gene called the azanthic gene, which a lot of people confuse the two genes. They think it's the same thing. Azanthic means with, A meaning without, and xanthic meaning yellow, so it's without yellow. So the azanthic gene removes yellows. Now we have an azanthic gene in ball pythons, we have an azanthic gene in carpet pythons. I'll show you the difference between them. In ball pythons, there's actually three different lines that, that I'm aware of of azanthic, and they're not compatible with each other, just like the anery gene is not compatible with each other in, in boa breeding. Uh, there's an a, a, a VPI line, there's a TSK line, and there's a Jolif line of azanthic. Uh, you know, different people like different lines. I basically work with TSK and, and, a, and VPI, and I think those are the best ones, but that's just because that's what I got. <laughs> so we'll take a look at those, and we'll show you the difference about what they do and how they work and what the snakes look like. So stay tuned, we're going into that snake room. All right, as I mentioned in the intro, we're gonna be looking at the difference between the azanthic gene and the anery gene or aneurysmic gene. 
This, in ball pythons, we have what's called an azanthic gene. It's a gene that removes yellows. There is no anery gene that we know of in ball python breeding, but we definitely have an azanthic gene, and there are several lines of it, actually, that are not even compatible with each other. There's the TSK line of azanthic, and then there's the VPIT positive line, and then there's, I think, a Jolif line, too. But this is the uh, VPI azanthic line, which is the most popular line of... Um, the azanthic gene. You can see this snake, uh, you, you can see it more when it was first born, but this is just a pure uh, azanthic. It actually has its head for a couple things possibly, and um, but this is no yellows in here. And it gives you this like almost gray scale looking snake. Uh, there's a little bit of like brownish tinge to it, but not much and they all are, are slightly different. Now, when you start mixing other genes in with azanthic, you get more of that grayscale animal that we really, really love. I'm gonna show you, the. this is actually a scaleless head azanthic, and I've shown you the, uh, the litter mates of this one, who is a completely scaleless, and in the completely scaleless form, it really, really looks more azanthic than this one, but this is, this is a pretty standard azanthic ball python. All right, now this is the, um, the scaleless VPI azanthic. So this has got no scales and it's azanthic. Uh, the fact that when you take away the scales, these snakes tend to look a little bit more azanthic, even if they're not azanthics. That, that's just the way it works with these scaleless animals. But you can see this one, this is really, really, this is like the ideal gray scale. That's why I love this, this animal. It's like got no yellows in it. It really has no browns or reds in it either, but. And that's probably more so because of its scaleless nature, but you can just see there's no yellows. In bull pythons, there's not really many reds. There's oranges, there's beautiful oranges, but there's not many reds anyway in bull python breed. But this azanthic gene removes the yellows. So it takes away that yellowy effect. And that's exactly what the term A, that means without xanthic, without yellows. Here's a VPI azanthic, bamboo, and I think there might be fire in here. I'm pretty sure there's fire in here as well. And those genes all really kind of add to each other. Bamboo is kind of azanthic-y looking anyway. You can see that bamboo pattern along the dorsal aspect of the animal. Uh, the azanthic gene removes the yellows, obviously, and then fire kind of lightens things up and takes away a little bit of yellow too. So nice combination. We're breeding this girl. She's, she's got a little boy in with her right now. So we're not going to bother her too much, but this is a bamboo a VPI azanthic fire. Now here is a beautiful, beautiful example of a azanthic carpet python. So this is a carpet. This is part of my snow projects that I've been breeding. So this is a azanthic means no yellows. Carpets don't also have the azanthic gene. They don't have an anery gene, but they have an azanthic gene. So there's no yellows in this. And it's 100% head for albino. Now, something interesting has been happening to this animal since it's, it's been grown. This, I produced this guy in, in 21, so that's just, he's about two years old now. And slow grown, as you can see, but he's getting darker. He, he almost is, it's like his body is adding melanin. And he's the only carpet I, that I've had from these litters that is doing this. But as he's getting older, he's getting darker and darker. And so he's looking more, he's looking more and more azanthic. Now, the way you can tell azanthic in, in carpet pythons, if you look at their eyes, they get this silver eye. I'm just going to pull back a little bit and zoom a little bit. There you go. So see that silver eye? That tells you that's a visual azanthic because sometimes azanthic in the single gene copy, you can actually see some traces of azanthic. A lot of people think azanthic should be an incomplete dominant gene, not a recessive, because you can actually see a difference in the single gene form. But this is a this is a visual two copy azanthic. There's no yellows left in this animal, and as you can see, it's gotten very dark. Those, the, if you see, look, the saddles are almost like starting to merge with each other. It almost looks like the IMG gene, increasing melanistic gene in ball pythons, excuse me, in, in boas, 
where the snake gets darker as it gets older. Now it's interesting because this snake is kind of small still, so I'm, I'm assuming I, I, I'm going to have to keep him now. I wasn't going to, I wasn't planning on keeping him, but I can't get rid of him now because what if he turns all black? <laughs> I can't take that shit. That's why I don't sell things quickly because you never know. It's, you got to let these things develop. He's definitely um, interesting looking, but this is a typical azanthic. Well, not really typical, but this is an azanthic look for sure. That black and white, that like grayscale look of the animal. Now here's a snake. That's a. Um, this is my snow carpet, and snows are albinos, which you can obviously tell this is an albino. Azanthics, meaning. All yellows or yellows are supposed to be gone, but in carpet pythons, especially some localities like the, the Erie and Gyas from Papua New Guinea, you they tend to be, have a lot of yellows in them already. So when you put that azanthic gene in it, it removes some of the yellows, but it doesn't remove all of them. If you look down here and see a typical albino, you see how yellow it is. And then you look at this one, you can see there's a definite difference. There's way more whites in here. In order to get rid of all the yellows, you have to use another gene, either a hypo gene um, or the caramel gene, which are similar, and they kind of will wipe out more patterns. So once you add like two copies of caramel gene, you get a completely white carpet python. But in order to do that, you've got to put more genes into it. So it's not quite as easy. Whereas in other snakes, like, you know, you can get a white snake just by you know, using, you know, an albino and azanthic gene, but not so in carpet pythons, especially not with the, uh, the localities we've been using to get these. And this male is going to go with these. I'm going to be putting him with his girlfriend right now because breeding season is here. All right, now we're over to the uh, boa section and we're going to be talking about the aneurtheristic gene, kind of abbreviated anery. We all call that, most boa breeders call it anery gene. Uh, this is what I believe to be a super hypo, anery, one. There's different types of anery. So there's a type one anery, type two anery, I'll show you in a minute. And then there is the black eyed anery gene, which we'll discuss as well. But this is the original type one anery gene that is found in Colombian boas. It removes reds. And as you can see, this snake is kind of a grayscale snake. The interesting thing about the Asanari gene is that, um, and I think if this this particular snake itself, because it has two copies of the hypogene, I believe it has two copies. It, it has at least one copy. Look at those blue eyes it has. You can see when you put those, this is known as a ghost or a super ghost. If it is indeed two copies of hypo, I believe it is. It's interesting because I am convinced that the this snake also contains the increasing melanistic gene, IMG gene. A lot of the brothers and sisters have it. Um, I kept this little boy back, he's a 2021, because I really believe that he had it. Because he's so he was so clean when he was born. I mean, you could tell he was super hypo. And now he's starting to get the like black little pigment spots. And with two copies of hypo gene and anery gene, you know, those pigment spots, I don't know, they just don't look, they look like they could be consistent with possibly the IMG gene, you know, starting to try to lay down melanin. Obviously, there's a fight between the IMG gene, the hypo gene, fighting, you know, and especially if there's two copies of the hypo gene, they'll fight that ability to lay down melanin. But look at that eye. They have it's a really beautiful eye in this snake. But this is typical anery one. All right, now this snake is a what I would call a dwarf boa. It is a blood. It has the hypo gene, and it also has the anery 2 gene. Matter of fact, when I got the original female from Vin Russo, it was a hypo blood female, and I bred it to a super hypo head blood male that I had also gotten from him, and this girl was produced back in 15, I believe it was, or 16. And... I was like, what the heck is this? It was clearly looked like it was blood, but it was, it didn't have any red in it. And I soon realized, and I think Ben Russo realized that that anery 2 gene, which is the Central American or dwarf boa version of the anery gene, which ironically is not compatible with type one. You breed a type two to type one, you get double heads. So these are unique genes, almost like in ball pythons with the um, azanthic gene, all the different azanthic forms are different. They're not compatible. And 
both parents obviously had that antery gene, one copy of it. And when I bred them together, I produced what we call a plasma. So this is a hypo blood antery two. And she was she actually has changed a lot over the years. Depending on you know what's what point in her breeding cycle she is, she can get darker and lighter. She seems a little darker than she normally is, but I've seen her get really, really light too at certain times. She, I think she's gonna shed soon too. She's looking a little uh, like she's ready to shed. So but this little plasma girl, I, I and I've actually bred her since then. So I've actually this I have three generations of these bloods. And uh, I'll probably breed her again this year. I haven't just I just haven't thought about what I want to put to her. Obviously something blood, hopefully something that doesn't have the anary 2 gene so we can get some nice colorful snakes. Cause you know, while this is kind of cool looking, you know, obviously we really want to bring the reds out in, in the uh, in the boas. But she's a, she's, a, she's a really solid snake once again. And I, I've had her for quite a while cause I produced her. One of the first I produced in one of my first holdbacks too. So I'm kind of excited about her. All right, now the third type of anery gene or aneurysmic gene in boas is what's known as the black-eyed anery, or as, and there's two forms of that, but the most popular one is the one that Mike Weitzman works with and that most people have gotten from him. And I think it came originally from Ralph Davis and it's called the RDR for Ralph Davis Reptile, black-eyed anery, BEA. So if you ever see that RDR, BEA, that's what it stands for, Ralph Davis Reptile, BEA. And this gene has become the most popular gene, I think, of all the anneries in boa breeding. I don't have a, just a pure black-eyed anery I can show you, but this is a phantom that you could make with the black-eyed anery gene, and, and it kind of gives you a good uh, idea of what it does. Black-eyed anery removes reds, but it, it also removes some yellows, too. So it kind of is a dual gene. It almost acts like a... Uh, a Azanthic and anery gene all in one. And it doesn't inhibit all yellows, but it definitely takes some of the yellows out I've noticed. As these snakes age, they just don't, they don't yellow, you know? Now, obviously, if you have a, co a couple hot copies of hypo gene in there, that does help also, because hypo can erase some of the yellows, as we've seen not only in boas, but we've seen that also in carpet pythons, like I showed you before. So this is a, what I believe to be either a hypo or super hypo paradigm. Okay, and a paradigm is a one copy of an albino, the sharp albino line, and one copy of the Boa Woman Caramel T positive line. When you have one of these, they're allelic to each other and they produce something called a paradigm. And then it also has the black eyed anery gene. Now, like I said, I have to show you this because I don't have just a pure black eyed anery with nothing else in it ironically enough. So uh, all my breeders are het RDR. So this is a visual RDR, black eyed anery. And you can see it's, it looks like all the yellows, all the reds are completely sucked out of the snake. And it has this, as we call it, phantom-like look to it. And it's pretty cool. This is a baby right here. I don't have any, I mean, I'm still growing these guys up. These are guys that are about a year and a half old now. And I'll show you, just remind you, what it looks like when you have an, a sharp albino version of this, which we call the blizzard. All right, wrapping up today's video, we're sitting here with our super hypo blizzard. You know, to give you a little history, when Boas first, you know, when we first found the albino gene, I think Pete Call was the first person to breed, actually breed an albino. They found a couple in the wild. People couldn't get them to breed. Pete Call got them to breed and produced the first albino. So I think since they produced that first albino, the goal was to try to produce a pure white boa. And they did a pretty good job combining the, making the first snow when they combined that albino, that call albino gene with the anery one gene. But the, the problem was, even if you put hypo in there, which they call the moon glow, even with the hypo gene in there, the snake would come out white and then with a little bit of purple tinge and it would turn yellow as it got older. And I just think people were not satisfied with that. Then the super fire diamond came about, which really wasn't an albino, it was just a leucistic snake, which kind of became super popular. And then I think Mike White, I don't know if he was the first one to do it, but he probably was. He decided if he put the black eyed anery gene with, with albino, he did it with sharp albino and also brought in one or two copies of the hypogene, 
we can make a moon glow, which they call the blizzard because it was used as the black eyed energy gene. Uh, and we might be able to keep it from turning yellow. And it appears that if you use this black eyed anery gene, which removes reds and some yellows with sharp albino and with black eyed anery and two copies of hypo, you actually produce a white snake. And these snakes stay white their entire life. They never turn yellow. They don't change. And I think this is the pinnacle of what the first person who set out, which was probably Pete Call to make a white, you know, boa, really the aim of it was, was to produce a beautiful, clean white snake that stays white and never changes it throughout its entire, entire life. And it just, I mean, it looks like a, um, it looks like some kind of like mythical creature almost, because it just, it just looks so cool and it's so pure. There's nothing, there's like no blemishes anywhere on this snake. And, you know, that's always something I wanted to do. And so, you know, I, I got this fire diamonds, obviously I have those, but they all, they still have markings on them. They still have blacks and stuff like that. But this is about as pure as it gets. And once again, it's all because of that anery gene. Just think about it. A lot of people said to themselves, well, why would we want to produce? I mean, boas are known for their reds, right? Why would we want to make a snake? Why would we want to use a gene that removes red from boas that makes them look so beautiful? But it's the only way to create a white snake, a pure white snake, to get rid of all the pattern. And this is the perfect combination. Two copies of Hypo, Sharp Albino, which you could probably do it with the Call Albino too, but I, we just happened to do it with Sharp Albino with the RDR Black Eyed Anery Gene. And that shows you the power of Anutheristic. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. I got all my kids in the video here. There's, Aria's now here, too. She, she wants to throw the football at me. Uh, you want to throw a football, too, Shayla? I don't want to get hurt. She, she has her bike out. She's got the bike out. She's doing everything. She was my snake helper earlier. All right, stop back like a cuckoo bird. <laughs> right. Right, start, guys, start warming up so I can... I can we we got we to... All right, getting down to business. You got a chance to see the difference between the anery gene and the azanthic gene. Uh, it's interesting because in boas, technically that black eyed anery gene might actually be azanthic too. We haven't really proven that out. It, it, if it is azanthic, it's not sh super strongly azanthic because we still do get yellows unless we have a hypogene added to it as well. Hey, Aria. <laughs> I like your red shirt. <laughs> Look at this. Who, don't you have a birthday next month? December the 21st. That's right. Everyone better a, wish Ari a happy birthday. Five. Guys, do you know on Christmas, do you know my mom have a, has a present on Christmas? Too? I'm sure you have a lot more than one present coming. You, no, these, but mom, you, you guys get way, way too many presents. No, for Christmas, mom gave me gonna give me one present. You're, you're gonna get you're present. gonna get way more than one present, I'm sure. Yeah, Sam is gonna give me way more. <laughs> I got like ten presents or eleven. Oh yeah, eleven, eleven. Alright, well guys, once again, I hope this video helped clarify the difference between the azanthic gene and the anery gene. Maybe you won't be so confused. A lot of snake breeding is about terminology and just learning the terms, what they mean, what the different genes do. And once you understand that, it gives you the ability to try to combine these genes and make some really cool stuff. So we love cool stuff, right, Ari? Yeah. That's right. All right, let's say goodbye to everyone out there. 100 is cool. <laughs> All right, guys, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. Hit that like button. We'll see you back. Come on. Bye -bye.